Welcome to the Christian Woman Leadership Podcast, where we hope to inspire you to embrace your God-given gifts, skills, and passions in order to lead with confidence. We want you to remember that you are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God, and you are fully loved by Him. You have been designed on purpose by God with unique gifts and passions in order to love and lead those around you. I'm your host, Esther Littlefield, a pastor's wife, business owner, mom, and writer. And I'm Esther's co-host, Holly Kane. I'm a wife, mom, and business owner. I also write at hollycane.org, where I focus on my passion for women's ministry. Together, we chat about important issues that Christian women leaders face. In addition, we interview other women just like you, who lead in various roles, from church to community to business. Through this podcast, we offer you encouragement, tools, and resources to help you on your leadership journey. We are so glad you're here with us. Hi, friend. Thanks so much for joining us on this episode of the podcast. I am here today with Holly, and we are going to continue in our Leadership Traits series. But before we dive into that, I just want to say Thank you so much for joining us in the new year. If you are a new listener, we want to welcome you to the show. And this podcast really exists to help you as a Christian woman leader so that you can be encouraged and inspired to embrace your gifts and lead with confidence. And we do a mix of episodes with Holly and I sharing some thoughts about leadership. We also interview amazing guests and I sometimes do solo episodes. So We just want to thank you so much for being here. And if you are a longtime listener, we're not forgetting about you. We are super grateful for you as well. And we have a small favor to ask in the new year. Last year in January, we saw a big increase in listeners. And I think it's because this time of year just has everybody kind of thinking about like, what do they want to do in the new year? So we would love if you would simply share this podcast with a friend, if you get value out of it. So that would be super awesome. Okay. And then the last thing I want to say before we jump in is if you happen to be listening and you also are a business owner or an entrepreneur, I want to invite you to check out my other podcast, the Christian Woman Business Podcast, because I have realized that some of you may not know that I have another show. So please go on over to your podcast app, click the link in the show notes, and I'll have a link there for the business podcast. And I started a Facebook group over the holiday break. I just on a whim decided, you know what? I'm doing this. I'm starting a second free Facebook group just to talk about Christian women business owners. So check the link in the show notes because you got to come over there if you are an entrepreneur or a business owner. So Holly. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, welcome back. Hey, thanks. So I want to just echo all the things that you said. So thank you for sticking with us. Have you been here for a long time? And we're so happy if you're new and joining us. And yeah, welcome into our little world. Yes. (laughs) I hope you enjoy it. (laughs) We hope you enjoy it and we hope you stick around. Yes. Because our passion here and the reason we do this is to support you in your own leadership journey. So. Let's talk about what we're going to talk about today. You want to share okay. kind of an intro of what we're going to do? Yeah. So we've done a few episodes so far on leadership skills and traits that we feel are important for us as leaders to develop. And we believe that we can always be learning and growing. And while there are many traits that are innate in leadership, many qualities that are, there are some that are not. And much of leadership is about learning and developing skills. So if you hadn't, haven't heard those other episodes, you want to start with episode 120. That's about vulnerability. In 121, we talked with Tara Matson about the importance of integrity for leaders. That is a very timely episode to listen to. Oh, yes. <laughs> Um, and I think perhaps I would suggest maybe trying that one out. Yeah. Also, she has a really great book on that whole topic that I, I read a lot of or skimmed at least a lot of it and it was really good. So check that one out. And then the last one that we've done so far in this sort of leadership skills and traits was 122, where we talked about servant leadership. So go check those out. But today we are going to do something. We're going to talk about one of the most important skills that we think leaders need, and that is communication. Yes. 
Yes. And <laughs> Holly and I have been talking a lot <laughs> about <laughs> communication and about how this is like such a huge, huge, huge topic. It's mm-hmm. really hard to cover in one episode. But yeah. recently I was listening to another podcast and I wish I could remember which one it was because I would love to go back and get the actual quote. But basically the person said, good leaders are effective communicators. Mm. And I just, I think this is so true. If you yeah. if you think about, you know, the leaders that you follow, I really think that as leaders, we need to be developing our communication. And as we grow in communication, we will also grow in our ability to lead. So we talked about communication on a previous episode, way back episode 72, And we actually did a whole communication series. So this is not the first time we have hit on this topic. And I think that those episodes that we did before would be a great reference point for this conversation. But what we're going to do today is take a little bit of a different angle from that series that we did before. And so we're going to talk about one specific aspect of communication. But here are just a few of the foundational beliefs that I think that I have myself, and probably I think you agree, Holly, (laughs) that will help you to be an effective communicator. So this just kind of under underpins everything we're going to talk about. So the first thing is that the way we communicate matters. Our communication is part of our witness as Christians, and I believe Christians can and should be marked by an ability to communicate truth with love. Mm. And then the second foundational belief is that every person is made in the image of God and how we treat one another matters. And again, how we communicate with one another matters. Mm-hmm. And then lastly, many communication and conversation skills are not innate, as Holly already mentioned. They must be learned, practiced, and refined over time. So that kind of gives us just an introduction to what we're going to be diving into. Yeah. And there are lots of practical situations where this sort of plays out and where we need these conversation and communication skills. And I just want to touch on a few of them. And so The first one is when we disagree with someone, whether they're a Christian or they're outside the church, how we disagree matters. I've said that before. We've said that before on this podcast. And it's all about how we communicate with people that they know that we can respectfully disagree with them. The next one is that when, when we're in the midst of conflict, again, this could be conflict within our family or at your workplace or at your church, but how we handle that is very important. And another one is when you're addressing issues within our culture, things that go against God's word or areas where you want to see change take place. I think when you're called to leadership, you know, oftentimes you do have to address some issues in culture and how you handle that is the huge part of your witness and sort of integrity and what you stand for. So that's important. When you need to convey a vision or a goal to your team or company, this is huge. So much of leadership is about people following you. That's the whole (laughs) point, right? And so if they don't understand the goal or the vision, they can't follow you effectively. And so that's where communication comes in. Yeah. And then finally, where you're sharing a message, whether it's a specific message that you have in a blog post, podcast, or book, or just even your normal writings on Facebook, and whether it's your message or the gospel, however you're getting that out, it's really important that your skills are, I want to say, worthy of the message, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like we need to be doing these things with excellence and responsibility and looking for growth. So this is not about perfection. It's about forward motion of always getting better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And I think here is what we really know to be true. If you can become a better communicator, you will become a better leader. Mm. And so that's really our goal here in this, in this conversation. It's just to give you some practical ways that you can do that. And just what you just mentioned, Holly, kind of made me think back to our episode with Elisa Childers about apologetics. Mm, And one of the key things that I have gotten out of just diving into the world of apologetics is how important it is 
to develop your ability to talk about the gospel in a way mm-hmm. that will make sense to other people. Like that's a huge part of apologetics. Yeah. It's not just defending the faith. It's actually finding ways to have conversations with people that will make it clear to them what the gospel really is about and why it's truth, you know? So I think that this is really an important topic. And so if you can transform the way that you have conversations and deal with conflict, deal with disagreement, I believe it'll transform your relationships. It'll have a ripple effect on your workplace and your church and even the culture. And as Christian women leaders, I think we actually have a lot of potential to Mm. create this ripple effect with the help of the Holy Spirit, of course, that we can help create a healthier culture by transforming the way that we communicate. So part of what we're going to be doing here this year in 2021 is that I'm going to be sharing some solo episodes where I'm just going to be sharing some of the ideas more in depth that I have around this topic. And hopefully, again, providing you with some practical skills that you can apply in your own leadership. So, yeah. So today we are talking about communication, but we're talking about one specific key aspect of communication that's going to help us be more effective as Christian leaders. So today we are going to focus all on clarity. Now we referred to this in episode 72, but we didn't actually do a deep dive. So today we want to give you a bit of a framework that will help you have more clarity in your communication. But first let's talk for a minute about why it's so important for leaders and why we would want to grow in this area. This might seem really obvious, but sometimes the really obvious things are the things that we skip over and can really be things that we trip up on and don't even notice. So clarity is important so that people can understand you and your message and your vision, which kind of goes exactly back to what you were talking about with apologetics, speaking so that people can understand the gospel or the specific piece of the gospel or Bible that you want to help them understand. So The other thing is that clarity about your message, what you're saying in your communication helps you to attract or repel people. Now that sounds really weird to repel people, but if you're in the business world at all, you understand what that means. You know, you have a message that's for a specific audience and it's really going to hit home with those people and probably not with people that are not in that specific audience. So it's about attracting or repelling people. Clarity also helps us earn trust. And it also helps us to be found worthy of leadership. It really conveys our integrity. Clarity also helps us avoid confusion, which really is another, if you look at it another way, is a form of mistrust. If people are confused, they have a hard time trusting your message, what you're saying, and who you are. And then finally, clarity, I believe, conveys love to people because it's a level of caring and really going that next level to engage with them and making sure they have what they need, they understand what's going on, and they're part of what you're doing, what you're leading, whatever that is. They're a part of it and they can actively engage with it because they understand. So does that make sense? It does. Yeah, I think... Yes, I'm just like over here doing all the <laughs> all the fist pumps as you share this. So, and here's the thing about clarity. I think that a lot of times we think we are yes. being clear and you know what? We're just not. <laughs> we are just not. So what can be clear to us in our own mind mm-hmm. may be still very, very fuzzy or confusing to the people we are communicating with. So I have a little example to share that I think might help us think about this. So, you know, let's say you're the leader of the women's ministry at your church. I know some of you who are listening, that is that is your role. <laughs> so let's pretend that's you. And for about six months, you've been working with your pastor, other leaders in the women's ministry, and you're formulating this whole new vision and plan for the women's ministry. And in that process, you decide to change several things. So you're going to end certain programs or activities that you've been doing and start new ones. And so for you and the fellow leaders and the pastor and everybody kind of at the leadership level, the vision is crystal clear. You're excited and you're ready to go. 
And so you decide to announce this, the changes, and you call a meeting to communicate the new vision to the women. So you do that and it's exciting and you think all is well. And so you go ahead and you move forward with the plan, diving into all the new things and making the updates and the changes. And then a couple months later, you start to hear rumblings and feedback from women here, there, and everywhere. And they're kind of confused. Like they're asking, what's going on? What happened to that event we normally host this time of year? Or why are we doing this now instead of that other thing? And so the fact is you thought you had communicated effectively and clearly, but you actually needed to do more than that. And so I don't know about you, Holly, have you ever found yourself in in a situation either on either side. I know I've been on the side of hearing a message and I think the person communicating thought it was clear and I was still really confused. And then I probably have done the other side of it too, where I've thought I'm being totally clear and people over here are still wondering what's going on. Yeah. So I can think of quite a few times when that's happened. And I even had this one time where I had to say to another leader, yeah, you've been thinking and working about on this for quite a long time, but you're forgetting that the people that are following, you know, it was in one ear and out the other three years yeah. ago and right. they haven't had any updates on this. So coming out to say, okay, we finally did X, Y, Z is going to be a surprise to them. Right. You know, while I was kind of doing a little bit of research about this, I saw that Microsoft did a study and said that for people to actually retain information that you are sending out, you have to repeat it between six and 20 times for them to get it. Yeah. Six and 20. And we, <laughs> like, we forget, we say yeah. it one time and we think everyone is completely up to speed. And so, yeah, yeah I mean, even if we're clear, sometimes even just repeating the same mm -hmm. clarity is needed. So, right. Yeah, Reinforcement, yeah. I guess. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So really here, what we're going to do today is going to share four keys that will help you have more clarity in your communication as a leader. We hope that you can take at least one of these things and go ahead and work on developing that area of communication for yourself. So the first thing is you need to have clarity about your message, about what you're actually sharing. <laughs> And I just want to say that with a caveat that I understand that there are times where we are in a meeting and we have to say something or we have to share something that we may not have total clarity on yet. Mm. And I think it's good to just be transparent about that and to say, you know what, this is something we're thinking about. This is an idea I have. I'm not really sure yet if this is something we're going to do, or this is an, something we're going to pursue. And I think that just helps breed that trust that you were mentioning before. Mm -hmm. If you don't have clarity yourself to share that, but here are three things that you can ask yourself to get clarity about what you're going to be communicating. What do I want to say? So what is it that I, I'm actually going to try to say to people? Why am I mm -hmm. sharing this? Why do I want to say it? And how do I want to say it? And so you, you want to take a little bit of time really having clarity about what that message is in the first place. So if we're thinking about that example of, you know, the women's ministry, the change in direction, you know, it would be really important to share what's happening, why it's happening, and then how it's going to happen. And so if you have that clear in your message that you're going to present to your group of people, it's going to make a lot more sense to them than just, this is what's happening. You know, if you only have one element of that, it's going to be confusing for people. Did you want to chime in there? Well, yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'll, it's fine. Yeah, no, I just think that it's, I'm just so reminded that this is one of the basic things we skip over so quickly and we head right into getting the message out, getting the troops on the ground, if you will, getting the people to start working on something. And we totally forget to stop and pause and have some perspective about this and make sure that, you know, we are clear about what we're saying. We're clear about what we're trying to convey and that we're not starting out with confusion right from the beginning. Yeah. And so I just, I don't know why, but I'm just, it's so funny that we skip over the most basic things and 
when bad things happen or confusion happens or, or or there's miscommunication, we're completely taken aback by it. And I just think it's funny because it's happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to you. So yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. So the thing that I think you need to do when you're about to share something, you know, a message of some kind, a communication of some kind is to ask yourself, will what I am saying make sense to the people who are listening? Mm. whoever you're talking to. That might be one person. It might be your child. (laughs) It might be (laughs) your coworker. It might be your boss. It might be an audience of a thousand people. But is this going to make sense to them? Is it going to be clear to them what is happening and why it's happening? And, you know, whatever the case is. Many times we actually need to get an outside perspective on this. We need someone else to review what we're going to share the messaging, the communication, and we need to find out, is there clarity here? (laughs) We need to be open to their honest feedback. I think this is huge for us as leaders to be humble enough to say, here's what I'm trying to convey. This is the message I'm trying to convey. Will you look at this and tell me, is that the message that this is conveying? Yeah. And I think when we are willing to do that, it's honestly, really, really hard. Like I've shared, you guys know I'm working on a book proposal. I know that when I finally finish the thing, (laughs) I need to have someone review it before I submit it. Right. Because Mm -hmm. I need to get outside of myself because in my head, it all makes sense. But to someone else, I need to know if someone else reads this, is this making sense? And I think that's really important. So this is actually something I thrive in doing with my clients, with my students in my business, because I can look at something and very quickly see, oh, this does make sense. This does make sense. And I can give them an objective perspective on what they could change to make their message more clear. So I think it's super important if you are in any kind of leadership role and you are going to share, especially if it's like a new vision for your company or for your church or anything like that, that you really care about people understanding and getting on board with, get clarity on that message before you share it. So Mm. that's the first thing. Agreed. I think we've all been part of something that's either started a new vision, a new mode of operation or whatever, that's had a bit of a rocky start because there wasn't clarity at the beginning. So, yeah. And again, I just want to caveat that with recognizing this doesn't mean that there's perfection or that every single step is figured out of how this is going to happen. That's not what I'm saying. But I think that the clarity around the why is super important. Mm -hmm. So, and I think it's about doing the best with the information that you have, just trying, pursuing excellence with what you know right now. So, all right. So the second key that I want to talk about when it comes to clarity in communication is self-awareness. And we actually talked about this in an episode way back at the very beginning when we were still a little green in podcasting. And so we'll put the link in the show notes to that episode, but we talk all about self-awareness. We may have actually done more than one episode. I can't remember how many we did um, talking about that, but self-awareness is so important in communication. I don't know if you've ever been in a conversation with someone that totally doesn't know that, you know, there's a quirk about their personality, something they're not aware of, and they continue on blindly. And then there's some sort of major faux pas or (laughs) miscommunication. So being aware of your strengths and weaknesses, as well as sensitive subjects or hot topics that might cause you to lose your filter (laughs) or lose your cool is really important. And identifying those before you start communicating is really important. And either avoiding some of those hot topics or maybe coming up with a way to handle them well is probably a good idea. Being aware of your motivations and intentions is really important. And sometimes, you know, some of those things are not always super apparent to us. Sometimes it takes someone else to point them out. And, you know, I get that. But being aware of your motivations and intentions can really color the way that you communicate to people. And 
it can be conveyed very strongly or it can be kind of an underlying current and it can actually change so much of what you're saying or how they perceive what you're saying. So that's a really important thing to remember. Being aware of your personality. You know that we talk about personality sort of tests and structures here. And so being aware of those things about yourself can be really important because sometimes we think that when there's been a miscommunication, it's personal or it is, you know, someone creating a dig at your leadership when in fact it could just be that there's a personality difference and the person just truly doesn't understand because they filter the world differently than you. And so if we come to those sorts of situations with that awareness, we are able to handle those a little bit better and perhaps not take things so personally. And then finally, being aware of your worldview is really important too. I think this comes a lot if you are specifically talking about apologetics or maybe evangelism, but it's really important if you're talking to a culture of people that you are aware of your own worldview because it does really color and influence what you're talking about with people. It may be a really good idea to figure out how valuable that is to the conversation and you know make sure that that's appropriate for how you are communicating. So I think that self-awareness can really help you sidestep some, I keep using the word faux pas, but yeah. you know, like things that are just culturally not acceptable, things that, you know, are unintentional and just really understanding yourself helps you take that first step into good communication, I think. Yeah. No, I love that. I think it's, it is so important to keep this in mind when we are communicating of just our own, essentially it's like being aware of your own perspective Mm -hmm. and how your perspective is probably different from the perspective of other people. And so if you can be aware of that, then that will help you to communicate more effectively. Mm-hmm. You know, I think of like the example of someone who teaches math or history and and they explain the problem and then a student raises their hand and is like, I don't understand. Can you explain it? And they explain it, but they explain it the exact same way again. Yeah. And then they do it a third time. It's like, no, no, I still don't understand. So like they need to be able to explain mm-hmm. it in a different way. So the self-awareness of saying, yeah. this is how I learn. This is my style of learning, yeah. but now I need to adapt the way I'm communicating to a different style of input, you know, of intake right. basically. So right. yeah. 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 Okay. So this leads right into kind of the next key that we want to talk about, which is discernment of the situation, the circumstances or the audience. And so you've kind of just talked about Holly, like understanding yourself. Well, now mm-hmm. we need to make sure we understand where we are, who we're speaking to, what's going on to be able to decide the right way to communicate in that situation. So it's really important to understand and to know who you are speaking to and adapt your message based on this. And so make sure that it's clear to the group of people that you're talking to. So we already kind of mentioned that in the first point of clarity of your message, but now let's talk a little bit more about the actual people that are receiving the message. One thing that you can understand about your audience is understanding the culture. You know, this can be as broad as like what country you're in to what town you live in, the neighborhood, the groups, the specific small group that you're speaking to. It could be, am I in a business situation? Am I in a church situation? Or am I in more of a broad social group? And so you're going to want to adapt your message based on the culture that Mm -hmm. you're speaking to at that moment. Yeah. Also understanding the demographics of that particular culture or group. Again, you're probably going to share a message differently to a group of, you know, people that are 65 and older than you would to a group (laughs) of (laughs) five-year-olds. We've, we, I know we've hit on this before, Yes, we have, (laughs) uh, but we just think it's super important to be aware 
and to go in prepared based on who that is. It could also be demographics, could also be, you know, their income range. It could be their education level. It could be, there's all kinds of things you could think about in terms of the way you might change your communication with that particular group. And then also understanding the history or kind of the backstory of the audience that you're speaking to. Is that group perhaps gun shy about leadership and integrity because there's been a past indiscretion or a past sin taking place? So maybe they're really going to be a lot more skeptical of you Mm. sharing a message than a group that hasn't had that. They could be reserved. They could be really excited because this is a brand new project. And so knowing kind of the background of that group is also important. And I think that when you can have discernment about who you're speaking to, it's going to help your message to come across more clearly. Yeah. And I think as I sort of think, and we talk about clarity in our communication, I think so much of this is a skill that we learn, but I think also it's such a reliance on the Holy Spirit to give us information that we may overlook about ourselves, about the message itself, about the situation. Sometimes there's things that we just couldn't know or don't know. And we just have to lean into his leading when there is a, you know, a sensitive situation or, you know, any of the situations that we deal with in leading people and loving people is just trusting his leadership in our lives for ourselves, for different situations, all of those types of things. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I think that's really a good point because I just think of different times where I've been, you know, about to share something with a small group or even on stage at church or different scenarios like that. And you really, if you can be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you Mm -hmm. know, you're going to be a better communicator. (laughs) Quite honestly, you're going to be able to communicate because like you said, he may reveal something to you that you need to say that you hadn't prepared. That wasn't part of step one, you know, in clarifying your message. Or like I've had a situation where in a small group, someone shares some information that's very difficult or challenging, Mm -hmm. you know, and again, it's that reliance on him to guide you in that situation to know the right words to say, because sometimes we in and of ourselves don't have the right words and the right communication to share. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. So the last key that I want to talk about is prioritization is super important when we're talking about clarity and it conveys love and trust to your audience, whoever you're leading. So it's really about identifying the importance of the message and then using the appropriate language and mode to convey your message. And when I say the word mode, I'm talking about like channel of communication, whether you're it's email, written word, video, audio, whatever the most appropriate channel of getting your communication out to people. And so a really simple, super simple example about this is you wouldn't see your child running in the street, running into the street, and then write stop on a piece of paper and attempt to pass it to them in hopes that they would stop, right? (laughs) So the urgency of the message and the urgency of the response should dictate the language and the mode with which you communicate. So that's what I'm talking about, prioritization. (laughs) Yes. Oh my goodness. Amen. Yes. Oh, I have so much I could say about this, but I'm going to let you (laughs) keep going. (laughs) So I have an example about this that is, I'm going to definitely not get worked up about it because I'm so far removed from it, but it does get me a little worked up. So (laughs) when my son was in school in Maine, I really appreciated the school system's communication prioritization. And what I mean by that is, when there was something with a PTA or something with a teacher or, you know, he had left something at school, I would get an email. These were not urgent messages. They were things that could be taken care of within a week's time or a day or two or whatnot. When there was a more urgent issue, I would either get a phone call or some type of automated phone message, or I would get a text. And That's, you know, like school is canceled, school's out now because there's a storm. 
you know, we even had a time when there was a lockdown in the school because there was a police situation, not at the school, but very close. And so they weren't allowing kids to leave or anything for their safety. There wasn't anything happening at school, but it was just a very urgent situation that they wanted to keep the kids safe. And that was wonderful. And, you know, I honestly didn't even realize that that prioritization was happening at that time until we moved and we came to a new school district and all of the communication was sent out through all of the channels. And what I mean by that was one day I got a text about PTA fundraiser, about a bus being late and about a bomb threat. <laughs> All on the same no. day. And I remember being so, not necessarily confused, but so disoriented, trying to figure out whether or not I needed to look at these text messages or answer these phone calls while I was working. And, you know, kind of constantly checking email to see if there was more information because I didn't know where further updates would happen about the most urgent of those situations. And at that point, I could have cared less about PTA fundraiser, right? And so it just, it gave me such a level of, I mean, I'll use the word anxiety because it did give me anxiety, but it it made me feel very untrustworthy of their communication because they were not prioritizing the information for me to digest it. And it was hard for me to figure out how to respond and how to feel like my son was safe there because I didn't know if there was an urgent situation, if I would know in a timely manner, and if I could sift through all their messages and come to an appropriate conclusion of how I'm supposed to respond to this. Yeah. So mm. I think it all simply comes down to measuring your desired response from the people that you're communicating to. Do they need to respond really quickly? And what do you want them to do? And so this is not about commanding people to do exactly what you say when you say it, but you would be surprised how much a message is misconstrued due to lack of clarity and directness in yeah. your messaging. So I think it's really important to to talk about this. And I think it comes down to, you know, we've all gotten that email with bare minimum facts about something that's happening. Maybe it's an event and you're left feeling like, how am I supposed to respond? Am I supposed to bring a dish to this dinner? Am I supposed to volunteer at the event or am I supposed <laughs> right. to attend it? Are you looking for donations for your nonprofit or ministry? Or are you just looking for prayer support? So your message should be clear enough that the audience's call to action is clear and your mode of getting it to them is appropriate. Yeah. So did you want to say something about this? Because I know you were like <laughs> ready to oh, go. <laughs> I was just thinking about various situations I've had with clients in particular or former employers that, mm. you know, everything is an email. Every yes. single thing that they want to say to me is an email with like multiple exclamation points, but mm -hmm. then the email will just end without anything like, okay, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this information. Like you were saying, right. Do you need me to do something in response to this? Mm -hmm. Like instead of Esther, oh no, my website's down. <laughs> okay. Okay. Your website's down. That is an urgent situation. What are the steps we need to, you know, do we need to get on right. a call together? Do we need to call the host? Like, you know, what's the next right. step right. versus just urgent information without mm -hmm. any follow-up of here's what I need from you. Yeah. And I, I think that point of just asking people for what, what you want in response is super important here in the prioritization point, because you're going to prioritize as a leader what you're putting out, but you should also prioritize what you need back from your audience or from mm -hmm. your team. You know, if I'm thinking about leading my team, if I have something that needs to get done by a certain date, I need to clearly communicate that to the team member and say, okay, this is what I need done. And this is when I need it done by. Mm -hmm. And you do that, you know, and rather than just being like, all right, this needs to get done. I mean, yeah. now they don't have clarity about what is supposed to happen. Yeah. So it's, yeah. I mean, we could go on about this one. <laughs> we shouldn't, but it is, I think, such a good point. And when you shared this example with me, I was like, yes, you have to say that on the podcast. <laughs> 
So can I give a pro tip? Oh yeah. Give a pro tip. No, finish what you were going to say. Nope. I didn't have anything else. (laughs) So my pro tip is if you can organize this before you have to enact this, it would be a great idea. So the same exact school example, if you want to say to the people that you work with, if it's, you know, something not important, I'm going to email you, but if it's really important, I'm going to text you. Whatever that simple sentence is, it's so important to have those lines of communication open and it just conveys safety. And like, like I said, it conveys love and it conveys trust. And once you set that organization into place, do your best to keep that boundary because when you don't, (laughs) it conveys a whole bunch of other stuff, but, (laughs) um, you know, whatever I've even heard one productivity person say that in their company, you know, they use email for everything, but they have these sort of codes at the beginning of the subject line on all of their message. So for example, NBD would be next business day or NU, not urgent or whatever the case may be, whatever type of organizational system you need to come up with, find something that works. It can be super simple. It can be super, you know, intricate, like I just said, but either way, if you have this laid out ahead of time, and if you are in a business, you could actually create a whole process around this. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> as an operation, operator. I can't even say the word now, (laughs) operational minded person. But again, it's just about conveying trust and being clear in your communication with others. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to mention that I'm going to put in the show notes, the link to episode 73, which is actually with my wonderful friend and client that we both work with, (laughs) Natalie Gingrich. She talked about communication and we did kind of talk about some of the things that you just mentioned. Perfect. And like really also thinking about the way you communicate and the way the other person on your team communicates may Mm. be different. Like the preferences may be different. So that importance of getting clear on the prioritization of how are we actually going to do this in our team, in our church. And having a plan in place ahead of time is going to reduce issues (laughs) so much. So much, yeah. So much, (laughs) yeah. And I would say one last little point on that is if you are on a team or if you do have a business, it's really, really helpful if you have kind of a point person for the communication yeah. of, you know, what's going on, because that will also help there to be clarity on who do I talk to when I have something mm. to communicate or when I have a question about the communication. It's helpful to have that point person. So, all right. We hope that this conversation has helped you to just find some things that you can do in your own leadership in your own communication to become more effective in having clarity. So whether you are simply communicating with your family or whether you're communicating to a large team or you have, you know, a thousand or 10,000 people in an audience that you're communicating with, we hope that if you go ahead and start practicing these four keys, that you will be able to be more effective. So to review, we talked about clarity around the message itself, self-awareness, discernment, and prioritization. So we want you to take action on this episode as usual. We don't want you just to listen to this and then keep going on your (laughs) rest of your day and click to the next podcast. No, stop now and decide, well, don't stop listening now. Yeah, after this is over, (laughs) take a minute and just say, which of these four is my weakness. Maybe you have a weakness that you need to work on. Mm. Maybe there's something that you thought of as we were listening that was like, okay, I have got to come up with a plan on how to prioritize my communication, or maybe I need to get clarity about what I'm saying to people. Whatever it is, just go ahead, take a minute, think about it. And then we will put a post in the Facebook group and ask for you to share which of these four things you're going to focus on. And if you're listening to this a year from now or six months from now, go ahead, just pop into the Facebook group and share. You don't have to have it on the post. You're welcome to just pop in and share. I listened to this episode and this is what I'm going to do. Because I think when you actually share that publicly or in, you know, with a group of people, it's more likely that you will follow through on it. So true. So true. Okay. Are you ready to wrap up with our fun question like we always do? I think I am. (laughs) Okay. 
So if you could pick a new hobby to pick up, what would it be? (sighs) Okay. So I really should have thought about this a little bit before. (laughs) (laughs) I know my answer. If you want me to go first. No, I actually, I did just think of it because this is something that I, I'll I'll give you the story. Okay. Okay. So it would be painting. I would say oil painting. I always say I am a horrible artist. Like Mm -hmm. drawing, it's like stick figures. It's so, you know, I'm just (laughs) not naturally talented with this. My daughter is amazing. She's just like a drawing fanatic and she's She's very good. She's constantly creating new drawings of things and showing me and I love it. And I was much more into arts and crafts when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I had tons of hobbies around making necklaces and friendship bracelets and all of that. But in terms of actual drawing and painting, no. No, not good at that. But for one of my friend's birthdays, we did an oil painting class. And yes. what another one of my friends actually teaches those classes. And she's an, a phenomenal oil painter. And we did this painting and I loved it. Like it was mm. so fun. It was relaxing. It wasn't stressful. And I thought my painting actually came out pretty good. So I think if I were to say, I'm going to start a new hobby, I would maybe pursue that. Yeah. So what about you? Okay. So you're going to laugh at me, but I don't care. Okay. (laughs) So I started watching this new show. I can't remember one of the streaming things and I can't even remember what it's called, but it's a British show because I love British shows. (laughs) (laughs) And it's this competition show for these people who are potters. So they have like the pottery wheels and they're in this big like pottery factory, whatever a pottery factory is called. (laughs) Maybe it's just called a pottery. Anyway, it just looks so interesting, like how they use that wheel and how they create different shapes. And then there's all these different techniques, like with the painting and how they fire it and glaze it and all of, and I, I mean, obviously I knew that this was a thing, but I didn't know there was so much into it. But I'm binge watching that show right now. And so I was like, you know, I, if I could have a little bit of proficiency at this, I would totally try it. But a year or two ago, I watched an episode, I watched a show where it was like glass blowing competition and I wanted to learn glass blowing (laughs) at that time. And then I watched this other show where they forged knives and I wanted to learn how to do that. (laughs) So I think it's just because whatever show you're watching, whatever show (laughs) I'm watching is what I want to do. I also watched a show. I can't remember what it's called, um, but it has Amy Poehler from Parks Parks and Rec. Rec. And she's it's like this crafting show. Okay. And yes. I was like, oh, is this the one this? that she does with Ron Swanson? Yes. With making it, making it. <laughs> and well, so I watched oh it word. and I was like, oh my word, I need to do all those things. That would be so cool. So it's okay. really just, it's not probably a true genuine one. So it's you, just whatever I'm into. At this all right. So in the Facebook group, you guys need to come up with the craziest shows yeah. about some hobby and just (laughs) give them to Holly to watch. And then we'll never know what she's going to start up, but okay. I'm going to change my answer. Oh, okay. I'm changing it to your answer. Pottery. Oh Oh, yeah. Why? Because I actually have always wanted to do pottery. Really? Ever since I was little, I just, that triggered that memory. It's so weird. I had just completely forgotten it, but I literally, when I was growing up, I wanted to take a pottery class. And then even as an adult, I've been like at various times, I've looked up pottery classes in the area to yeah. see if I could actually learn to do it. Cause I think it would be so, so cool. I think it would be so fun. I yeah. mean, I've done those ones where you go and paint your own pottery. Oh yeah. No, but that's not it. I want to make my own. I want to exactly. like, I want to make, I want to have it- a really ugly vase that yeah. I can say I made that. <laughs> that is so funny. That <laughs> thought that exact <laughs> sentence just came into my mind. I want to have a really ugly vase sitting up somewhere collecting dust. And Ooh. I'm going to say to every person that walks by it, I made that. Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh my goodness. We are in sync. We're totally oh, in sync. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is, this is awesome. All right. So we are going to also ask you, I guess we got a yes. lot of stuff to go in the Facebook group. We do. We do. So we're going to have to figure that so out. So it's but... a hop in place that you need to come and join if you're not That's already right. there. That's right. You go to estralittlefield.com slash group. Yeah. And I have had so many people come into the group and they're, they've been like listening to the podcast for like the whole time (laughs) and they haven't come in. So this is your call to action. You are personal. We have a clear call to action. (laughs) Come to the Facebook group 
and join us. Yes. It's not scary. It's we not. are very nice. We just don't let you come in and promote yourself all day long. Yes. That's the that's the basic rule is don't come in and try and like sell us stuff. Yeah. But there will be opportunities to share what you are up to if you have yeah. some sort of something. But we would it's love to have you in the conversation. It's a conversation and community. Yeah. That's you right. You want to become your friend. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So thank you so much, friend, for joining us today. And thank you, Holly, for being my co-host. You're amazing. Oh, thank you. I enjoy <laughs> all of our conversations. And I feel like we learn new stuff about each other every time. It is. It's funny. <laughs> we do. We learn new stuff and we hopefully don't cause our listeners to wonder what is wrong with us. <laughs> Scare away people. <laughs> we might oh, repel well. a few. <laughs> oh, well. That's okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, friend, we will talk to you next time. Thanks for joining us on the Christian Women Leadership Podcast. If you enjoyed this conversation, come and join us in our private Facebook community. We would love to get to know you better so that we can make sure the podcast is providing what you need. Plus, you can share your questions and ideas, and you'll be surrounded by incredible Christian women leaders. To join the group, visit estherlittlefield.com slash group. Now don't forget, your leadership matters, and it's time for you to embrace your gifts and lead with confidence.